Mm. Okay, we've got a pretty full agenda, so I'm going to go ahead and call <coughs> this um, February 20th, 2018, Transportation Committee of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners to order. Um, we have our, um, some special guests here. Um, I have my county administrator that is here, uh, Mark Till. We have the county commissioner, um, Mike Mulcair. We have our um, county director of um, multimodal transportation, Gary Watson. We have Jennifer Moore here standing in from our legal staff. Who else is here? Um, yeah. Miguel Valentin, uh, the director of transportation. And David Goods here. And anybody else? That's it. Joe Bean. Joe Bean. She stepped away. She stepped down. All right. Of record. Of record, which is our, our committee um, secretary. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, can I have, has everybody had a chance to take a look at the meeting minutes from our last meeting? Any corrections, additions, amendments to it? And again, just for the record, we typically take these meetings as when we don't have comments back. We, at least with the board commission, we tend to say that there's no comments. We, we leave them as mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Would that agree? Mm -hmm. All right, so we don't get any comments, so we just want to make sure we get direction. So I'd like to make a motion. Um, I call the question, make a motion to <coughs> approve uh, the meeting minutes from our last meeting. <coughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, meetings have, uh, meetings have been adopted. All right, so let's just jump into this thing and plow through. I think first up, we had a very special guest, um, Jennifer Moore. You're here. Uh, you were here, not here, sort of, kind of here. You're giving the update. I'm giving the update. Okay, please go right ahead. I'm Just here for the update, and then I'll leave you guys to it. Okay. All so right. um, I'm going to talk about the two transportation bills that have been introduced. Um, Vice Chair Robinson asked me to kind of give a brief update, and you've all gotten a copy of those. Um, House Bill 930 um, is the thicker bill. Um, that one was introduced by Representative Kevin Tanner. He's the House tra Transportation Chairman. That was introduced on February 13th. He's kind of championing um, this bill. Um, there is a, a Senate bill. It's the companion bill to this one, but this is kind of the main bill, and they, they'll often um, introduce a bill similar to, you know, on each side of the Senate and the House when it's a really important issue, and this is a really important issue um, in their eyes this session. So this um, this House Bill 930 it includes recommendations from the House Commission on Transit, Governance, and Funding. Throughout this bill you're going to see the word transit used. It's kind of the new universal term. Um, and it's going to create a new regional governing board that's called the Atlanta Region Transit Link, or they're calling it ATL for short. Um, this House Bill actually has the ATL Commission as replacing the Greta Board, um, which is the Georgia Regional Transportation Authority. In the Senate bill, you'll see that it has the ATL Commission as a division of the Greta Board. So that's kind of a difference. Okay. That'll have to be fleshed out um, as the bills cross over and they kind of become one. Um, Again, back to the House Bill 930, and this is just the current version. This is going to change several times, so we're just talking about what's in front of you currently. Um, the, the ATL Commission will lead the planning and coordinating of transit in Metro Atlanta, um, as well as control state and federal transit funding. Um, once the legislation is signed into authority, if it's as it stands now, drafted before you, the board would consist of 15 members who would serve until December 31st, 2018. So, and uh, these members appear to be, from what I can tell, they appear to be current Greta board members. Um, and then in January 1 of next year, 2019, the ATL commission would be made up of 14 members. There would be 10 from authority districts, and those are created um, by a plan, which would be page 46 of this. It actually says page one, but it's, the page after page 45, so it would be 46, mm -hmm. um, and it lays out in detail that plan that lays out those authority districts. So one from each of those 10 districts, the governor would be the chairperson, the commissioner of transportation would serve as an ex officio non-voting member, and then the lieutenant governor and the speaker of the house each would get to appoint a member, and those would be your 14 members. Um, the ATL Commission will cover the Metro Atlanta counties of Cherokee, Clayton, Coweta, Cobb, DeKalb, Douglas, Fett, Forsyth, Fulton, Gwinnett, Henry, Pauling, and Rockdale. 
and this uh, piece of legislation would propose uh, two new funding revenues um, that would be created to support transit. One would be a 50 cent charge per trip on ride share, taxi, and that would include services like Lyft and Uber and limo providers. And then also um, the second one would be a 1% airport tax on concessions at the Atlanta airport. Um, the Metro Atlanta counties would be able to call for a referendum to levy that 1% sales tax, that transit floss for up to 30 years. And in this, um, the House bill, it lays out in pretty great detail the exact language for that refer referendum, how that referendum is to be held, what that tax can be used for, um, and it, it, it models uh, closely what our current SPLOS would be like. That's kind of the same way that it's set up as. Um, so the second hearing on this bill um, is actually happening right now, 2 o'clock, in the House Transportation Committee. Um, so there will be updates to this um, and amendments. These are the, I checked right before we came in here, these are the most current versions that are available. So after today, these, both of these bills are going to change. Um, and so Senate Bill 386, like I said, it's, it's a smaller, more brief version of the same thing. Um, it was introduced by Senator Brandon Beach. He's the Senate Transportation Chairman. It was introduced first, actually, on February 6th, but like I said, Representative Tanner is pretty much carrying um, this issue with his bill. Um, so like I said, the difference in this is that this is going to be, a, this would be a division of Greta as opposed to replacing it. Um, and the Senate Transportation Committee met this morning to discuss this bill. There wasn't a formal vote taken, um, but they did make a couple of amendments. Um, so um, before the tax, it wasn't specified, but now it shut the same as the House bill that the tax could only be for up to 30 years, which mirrors the language in House Bill 930. Um, and then before, it had composed uh, the board of 11 members. And so now um, what they're going to do is they're proposing that each of the 13 Metro Atlanta counties would get to have an appointment. The chairman would make the appointment. It could either be the chairman themselves or the chairman could just um, appoint somebody else. So like I said, this is a much more <coughs> brief version of House Bill 930. Um, and then just kind of a note, crossover day is February 28th. So we're coming up on that. There's going to be a lot of action on both of these happening. <coughs> Very good. And I I'm, don't know if I can answer questions that you have, but I know it's a lot of information, but I'd be willing to take any questions and get the answers for you. Um, thank you for that update. And again, this I, I did ask this, um, and I appreciate we were responding to it pretty fast. Again, this is the bill draft as is. Mm -hmm. uh, it will change. So we're not... Um, this is more information sharing. I mean, obviously, we're not making any um, policy decisions or recommendations to the full board based on what we're hearing. It's just for us to be more enlightened about what we're looking at. Um, and that's, that's really what it was. Mr. Mullen, if you've got a, you know. No, I don't have any of that. I was curious, perhaps, uh, if uh, Miguel has uh, tapped into any source uh, of, of information, anything that's going on, or pretty much observed like everybody else. Well, this. Um, uh, governance bill <clears throat> has been around for a while. This is iteration number, I don't know how, what it is, but it's been kicking around for at least uh, four or five years, uh, different versions. So I, I would anticipate that, that it would continue to evolve, uh, but essentially it's just trying to get a unified front as it relates to transit uh, to get beyond the original uh, MARTA county. Uh, to provide the authority for the counties to join the regional system. Okay. <coughs> yeah, good. Mm -hmm. you, and, and again, this is just us talking, and, and we won't waste too much, won't hold too much longer. But so what I heard was this wasn't just the 20 metro counties per se. This is statewide. This is, they broke it up into. Right. That, but this specifically would be for the metro. That this bill, the Atlanta, that this would be for the, the 13 metro counties. The 13 metro. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the governor would be over the 13 metro. Because, right. And there's not other 10 other areas or, like, we, you know. Because this is called the Atlanta Region Transit Link. 
yeah. commission. I think it leaves that issue open. If they maintain Greta, then there would be other um, uh, there would be an umbrella over other regional, you know, making right in Columbus. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm sure they're going to work through this, but the funding mechanism I heard 30 years. Um, I heard that they're going to be responsible for both federal and state. So, what becomes of ARC? Uh, does that stay in place for just the MARTA court? And we are constitutionally structured, they're, they're safe. I, mean, I didn't see that specifically they, mentioned. I, I can speak to that. ARC is, is the Metropolitan Planning Organization. Mm -hmm. It would stay as is. This does not impact them at all. Okay. Uh, what this would affect is uh, Greta itself. Yep. Now, of course, it would then uh, cement the, uh, the difference or, or the breakup uh, between CERTA and Greta, who are now part of essentially the same agency. But it will not impact the ARC at all. Wouldn't it? Okay. To be determined. Okay. I think that's all we can use for right now. Okay. Anybody else? Mark, you okay? Mm -hmm. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good here. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Very good. So we, again, I guess at Crossing we may come back if there's any distinguishing differences. Yes. And I'd, I'd be happy to, because I'll be following this because it'll, it'll be constantly changing. Right. Sounds good. Okay. Thank, thank you. you, Madam. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. All right. Let's, let's move on to our next one, which is uh, number two, 2018 SPLOS Research Seat. Miguel? Yes, sir. The uh, last year, the budget allocation uh, from SPLOST uh, initially was uh, intended to be three million, and the estimate came in a little higher, the original list, and I believe it settled around three million three six seven five six seven five to be precise. Yep. yep. And uh, so, but the actual expenditure as as the project played out came in closer to three million. Uh, this year, because of the allocation uh, from the SPLOS to the ELF NIG program, the Local Maintenance and Improvement Rent program, of uh, about half a million, that leaves technically 2.5 million uh, in available allocation for, for this year. The estimate of the original or the preliminary list that we put together came in at 3.2 million for 2018. So the question for the committee is in terms of budget, uh, we will of course uh, later on once we establish a budget distribute the list and, and I'm sure there's going to be uh, amendments to, uh, to some of the roads but um, the question is do we pare down the existing list to the 2.5 million for for this year, which is the allocation available, or do we keep it at 3.2, basically reallocating what was allocated last year and not spent to this year's effort? So that those would be two options uh, available. Hold, hold your thoughts on. Don't forget those numbers you said earlier. I 3.06 is what you said, Mark. Six. 3.675 and then three million. All right. So let's 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 talk about this, guys, as a committee. Let's go back to our budget process. And Madam Chair laid out a, a pretty clear approach to just writing it all in. Right. And we took an approach where we we froze a lot of efforts, right, to get in on the other side. Um, we threw in um, half million dollars from the capital transportation fund to make the process work. Right? We, we, we want to be tight. Uh, we also agreed, and again, we can go to the record, to, to, but I'm, I'm pretty clear that we said that we would use the SPLOST to fund, and I know there was some legal work that we done, so could we do it? Uh, can we use money from the SPLOST to fund the LMIG fund, LMIG? The LMIG, the SPLOS resurfacing is independent of normal LMIG. But because we went through that um, that justification, that tighter justification process, we, we forego the normal process and says let SPLOS carry it. We legally found out that we could. So we're two facts. So, so now I'm, I'm listening to this. That it's almost like 
are we going against what we just set in motion? And which brings me to my third point. These are just statements that, I, why wouldn't we just pare it back to match the numbers? We have nothing to prove to the public other than to make sure you deliver what we said we were going to go do. Um, this is to um, Commissioner Mulk here that, you know, this, this feels like, you know, we, we, I'll, I'll, I'll take responsibility. Um, it, it feels like, but we, we get to head it off this time. Um, a few years ago, we went through the budget process, we went through mm -hmm. the whole process, and we came up 2.3 million short. And the discipline should have been just cut the roads back. And we stressed it, and we didn't know, you know the money got moved around, and oh, 2.3 million went out the back door um, into that. Not wrongly, but you know, mm -hmm. we, 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 we moved it uh, collectively. That being said, is in this case, why wouldn't we just, I'll put this on the table, just cut, just make the budget match. Don't stretch. We have nothing to prove other than, I mean, again, we know we went, we were very scarce in resurfacing for eight years. We're on the other side of that. We're making good on what we're doing. We don't have to push this envelope. We don't have to always spend, we don't have to do that. Um, you know, again, as we heard in our finance committee, you know, we, we manage on a nickel. And it's pretty consistent, right? Um, and all things that we do recognize that we don't even take the fullness of the, the, the penny. Um, I'm going to stop there, and those are just my sentiments um, before we, you want to weigh in on this one? Yeah, I, I largely uh, concur with what you're saying. Uh, I, I do think there's an option, and it's, and it's kind of similar um, to what we did with uh, our SPLOS priority. And let's have a, a list above the line and have a list below the line. And if that line is you know, 2.8 or you know, 3 million or, or whatever it is, what if we save some money? for whatever reason, <coughs> and then we can go to some roads that are prioritized below the line uh, and do them in, in, in this year. But certainly not go beyond the money amount, you know, the limit that we say that, that we're going to go to. But, uh, you know, we've, we've had experience with the uh, uh, digital radio system and, and a couple other things where we're actually you know, coming in under the estimate, it could happen again. I don't know how often that happened with roads, but uh, it did you know, last year. Yeah, and and so maybe that's a way, uh, kind of a hybrid hybrid solution. But uh, to uh, Chairman's point, not go, but not uh, mm -hmm. exceed a certain uh, expenditure, but already have something loaded up that we can. We got the crews out here, and it looks like we're going to have the money. Go ahead and uh, exercise some extension to the original list. Does that, that make sense? Yeah, I get it. Mark, what are your thoughts? Well, a couple things to think about. So one reason we went with the 3.675 last year, simply because we weren't, at, at the time, we weren't spending DOT funds, DOT spots funds. So we needed to go ahead and spend some money up front. Well, it ended up we came in under budget, so we still had that 675000 Now, so our plan is still, unless the board sees fit to change otherwise, is to spend three million a year, which is eighteen million dollars on resurfacing. Um, even this year, at this point right now, we still haven't spent the biggest ticket item we spent on DOT is last year's resurfacing project, which ended up about three million. So the intersection projects we haven't spent money on. We haven't spent uh, money on the economic development. You know, a couple of small projects. You know, two hundred thousand here for the. You know the traffic signal you know so we haven't spent DOT funds um, mm -hmm. up to date okay. not to say you know that they won't come but we, our plan was still not to exceed unless the board saw otherwise the 18 million which is three million a year for the resurfacing mm -hmm. collective mm -hmm. okay yeah. which not to exceed not to exceed right. so but it's not gonna hurt us it's up to y'all, you know, what you want to do, but it's not going to hurt us, you know, to go with the 3.7, say it's 3.7, it's right at 3.65. So 500,000 goes to the LMIG match. That leaves 3.2, which is our estimate for the 2018 splice research. Any other questions? Okay. 
Say that again. Oh. So, we so last well. year we spent we spent three million. Yes. Done. Which you know, eighteen million by by six is three million a year. Yeah. So we budgeted or the board approved three point six seven five. So six hundred seventy five thousand. We didn't spend. So this year the budget and we spent. We spent three million. We spent three million. So where's this, this budget? Where, where's that extra money coming from? If the if the splash penny is not, where's that money coming from? No, we Say spent. We budgeted three point six seven, three million six hundred seventy five thousand dollars worth of projects. Yes. Those projects only cost us three million. So we didn't spend that six hundred seventy five thousand. But it doesn't exist. Well, it exists. It's okay, where you is on paper. Where's the extra six seventy five come from? Just plus. Was it collected? Yes, it was collected. Mm -hmm. How do you budget? The that? expenditures came in under budget, not the revenue. Yes, yeah, see, we were off, that, that's that's my concern. We're because you got to collect. We had to collect it. When, when do we do this budget? This this is important. We just. Back up. We just issued the SPLOS in April of last year. Give or take, just work with me. Mm -hmm. All right. So, but how do you budget above what you know you haven't collected yet? Recognizing you're collecting the bond principal interest first. And separate things. But I'm, I'm like, how can we budget above what we haven't even collected yet? <coughs> that, that's my follow the map. Mm -hmm. like, Come on, guys. Mm -hmm. And so this, this concerns me, the, the movement, it, it's like shells, it's like, come on, I, I just, it should be a linear line, it's like, well, why are we pressing this? I'm with you, stay with the three million. Three million is three million. That's more than enough. Why do we feel that we need to go, now, I got LMIG, that's a separate issue. Now, the issue was, we didn't have enough money to make the match. Go back to what Madam Chair was saying. That was the direction. Go back to that we were supposed to, Come up with a way to, to sort of help finance. Ken went away, came back, says, "Yes, we we can take money, use this." So I'm like, "Why are we?" So you're telling me money is left over, but I'm like, "But how is it left over when we never collected the original amount to begin with?" No, we collected it. It's just it's left over in what was allocated towards resurfacing. All right. So you didn't spend a full three million. No, we didn't. We spent three million. We didn't spill. We didn't spend the 3.675 that was approved by the board commissioners for year one. Right, but that was before, think about it. And this is what you're talking about in the budget or the SPLOS package, two separate things. I'm talking about SPLOS, not budget. I'm talking about SPLOS. How do you budget above what was allocated by law, by, pers by, by what we said we would do? No, that's. Help me understand. We're getting, that's, um, three million so we're doing exactly what we said we were going to do. So what the voters voted on what was, percentages. yes, we're 32% fire and EMS, 51% yes. transportation, 17% at that part. You say, no, 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 but we agree. We do not, I'm just going to go back to the three million per year. We know that that's a record. We know we're clear. We're seeing that plenty of times, three million per year, 18 million. I'm just asking. How do you get beyond that number? And, and why would the board of commissioners, why would we approve something above what we've already said? We're contradicting. We're saying one thing, but based on what you're just saying, like how do I budget above what we collectively as a group said, three million per year for six years? Mm -hmm. can, I, can I chime in? Please. I, I think, I wasn't here at the time, but, right. but I think uh, I've seen this happen routinely. What initially the department will target a certain number of roads and will do a first draft estimate, okay? That is what initially we approach, uh, we tend to approach the committee with. Here's, here's a, an estimate. And we, we are targeting the number of roads to the budget, which we know to be three million. However, when we do a more detailed analysis and we realize, okay, to really do all that we need to do on this group of roads is going to take 3.675 million. I think that's where okay. this 
authorization to go to 3.675 came from. Mm -hmm. But then, once that was approved and the county moved forward, we throttled back in terms of the uh, amount of overlay, not overlay so much, but leveling, and came in at 3 million. So, authority was given to spend 3.675 based on the original list, but ultimately it came in at three, therefore the six, seven, five authority not spent, not mm -hmm. utilized. Does that sound? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. And if we're going, so for example, if we're going to stick with the three million per year, then actually, so our cost estimate is at 3.2, but we have to dial that back to 2.5 million because 500,000 is already allocated to the LMIG match. Which is what I thought we were doing, which means yes. It, again, mm -hmm. don't shift. I mean, I'm, I'm talking out loud about that. My concern is when we, <clears throat> those three million per year, it's easy math. Right? This is how sometimes we get shut, we get sh like, okay, we're not spending over here, let's just move over here. We, we don't, we, we need to be more deliberate. And that's the transparency. Sometimes we get caught. We're the ones that have to face the public. This is okay. Wait a minute. You told us 3.6. You know, you told me 3 million per year, and you're spending 3.6. And we're coming up with this. Well, we sort of estimated, we budgeted, we refined it. We lucked up that it came in at 3 million, but you can't budget above the cap. That's what I'm saying. You, you, that now that's deficit. That's budget deficit spending, right? You're, you're in the hole, out the gate. To your point, uh, uh, kind of administrative. It should be 2.5 since we took five off the top to go to the LMIG. That's enough. Okay, what does that 500,000 get me? That's a match for what? On the LMIG. What's that? 1.3 million state right. funds. All right, so that's a total of 1.8. So 1.8 plus 2.5 is what? 6.3? Yeah, 1.8, 4 .5, 45, 18, 16. Did I do that right? 1.5, 2. 2.5 and 1.8 is what? 4.3. That's more than enough road resurfacing. I mean, why do we have to stretch it? Why do we have to spend? That's all I'm saying is that I want to take the maximum, whatever the spots gives us, spend it. That's fine. But nobody's questioning that. Mm -hmm. I just don't, I'm, I'm concerned about we're making a recommendation for us to consider going above and beyond that. The question becomes, well, but why? If there's some type of, if you show me a proposition that says to deal with some type of uh, purchasing power of materials, that if we get up to the, I'm just making this up, five million threshold, and that gets us, re I mean, give me something beyond, I mean, just the spend. I'm looking for the justification that says why we go above and beyond. Okay, the best justification I can come up with, which is, you know, it's fine with me to go either way, but. So we have to meet certain thresholds as far as spending that bond money. Mm -hmm. So of the 51%, so we have 8 million on sidewalks, we have 10 million on economic development, we have 18 million on resurfacing, that's 28, there's one more. We haven't spent any of that except for 3 million on resurfacing. So. Fire and EMS is keeping up with their percentages. Um, re re Parks is again. working, getting, is getting close. Read the list again of the projects from the DOT. So we just read them again. Eight, eight million on sidewalks, 10 million on economic development, 18 million on resurfacing, and then whatever's left is that's 28, 38, that's 15. So 15 million was on. Uh, Roadway upgrades and intersections. Okay. Right. Economic development, them, they, they can spend that fast. Um, you know, I mean, that, that, that doesn't have a, a long delay of, of, of being able to do that. Um, I'm listening to the resurfacing song. That's probably the longer one that you have to sort of schedule out over time, over season. Um, I, I get the 85, 85% in the first three years. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we would not, the plan would be not to exceed the 18 million. You're trying to accelerate. Yeah, is so we said, which is what we did last year with the 3.675. Mm -hmm. It's just that we didn't spend the full three. Because money is sitting in other pockets, in sub-pockets. It's just sitting there and not doing anything. Yeah. 
But it's but then well, what's the delay in why not putting the fire in the areas to like spend the money, guys? The St. George well, sit on forever. It just because they're in the design phase, so it just takes a while. Sidewalk, for example. Oh, okay. You know. Well, yeah. and I know I have a small. They don't care at all. Yeah. But but you have a schedule. There's a natural life. We plan this out. Uh, it will catch up, right? It, it, it's like hurry up, hurry up, you know, slow, 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 then it hurries up. Um, I, I just, so I just want to make sure I'm hearing it. I, I don't, I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm there to give, to go above the three million. I get your point, uh, not without a, a full conversation with the Board of Commissioners, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. I, I, not only this one, because it, all right, so the match we're talking about is going to come from Future spin in the SPLOS, three million. Yes. And we're not going into the general fund. We're not backdooring the general fund. Correct. Um, we're not going into capital transportation fund. We're not going into any of the discretionary account that happens to be there in existence or we perceived existence. This is purely SPLOS money. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Yes. Y'all see where I'm going? I, I, I think if we relegate this simply to the spots, um, we'd have to keep up with this. I mean, this, this could get away from us, but I still go back to it. I hear you, Mark, and I, I appreciate that part. To spend alone, I, could, I couldn't see it. I wanted to entertain because there is a, a percentage that we do have to hit within the first few years, but we just started, right? We haven't even experienced our first year yet, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. We need to make a decision right now. Well, I know we do because you got to get um, actually. So pause for a second. Let's not believe and make this long. We got a pretty long agenda. We can come back to it. The, the, the action item. Tell us about the next step. Assuming that we sit, whatever we say, that there's a number for budget. What do you do next? Well, next um, we will distribute the list or com complete the distribution. And uh, there could be some fine tuning. Some commissioners may want to favor a particular road versus what's on there. And then we'll refine that list and then we'll cost it out. And if it's within the margin of whatever the allocation is, then that goes out to bid. Yep. Now, when that comes back, if our estimate was three million and it comes back at 2.5, and we know that uh, we have more roads we can do. If it goes the other way, then I think we might be in the same situation as, as last year, where we were looking to authorize the expenditure for the list that was put together initially. Right. Okay. Commissioner here's my or your old custom roads. Or custom roads. Yeah. I, I, I've got a, I got a suggestion for it, so I, I'd be willing to entertain. Um, motion for recommendation to the full board of commissioners to the extent of uh, $3 million, which is our existing cap, right, for all roads that match that, plus below your line, mm -hmm. um, for debate for us as a full board of commissioners, yeah. to amend it to the additional 675 plus the roads that are below the line. Mm -hmm. You can see where I'm going. In other words, I'm going to, to keep you going. We're going to do it at a minimum, do the $3 million as we committed. We're all on the same page. I'm just to extend beyond that, but Mark, with that, we need the justification model that shows that how far we are behind in the spend against that three years and 85%, which you already, I know you already got in your model, or Rich should be able to get it to you pretty fast. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah I'll this, I'll this right on. All right. Miguel, does that keep you moving? Yes, sir. I don't yeah. know how to put that in motion. But <laughs> <laughs> um, you restate it, and I'll say, yeah, so move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Right, right, that right, way right, I don't right. have to. I'd like to make a motion. I'd, I'd like to call the question for a motion um, to make a recommendation to the full board of commissioners for uh, our, our, this is called the SPLOST and LMIG resurfacing for 2018. Is that accurate? This would be just the SPLOST. Just the SPLOST, right? So mm -hmm. um, for the SPLOST 2018, um, with the following conditions, um, um, a, a listing of rules that will not exceed three million, um, and that there's a cap of three million dollars out of the SPLOS as the sole funding source, and I'm not paying something. And then, um, with debate on expanding that uh, for the match for 
the LMIG component. Is that accurate? You well, the, now the the uh, expanding would be if if the bids come in higher than the three million. Yeah, because the, the five hundred thousand for the LMIG match that's, has already been that's already been then. dealt with. Mm -hmm. So where did that money come from? It's lost. So you're talking about two and a half million road? Well, it it would it could be three million for this year, but going forward, you would have to throw it a little back to two and a half million mm -hmm. to get your spin. Yeah, yeah. which yeah. is what we were saying earlier with the three point six seven five. Mm -hmm. I, I think I think just for the exercise we just went through with the budgeting, and because we only allocated five million, I, let's just stick with the three million. Recommendation: Get us a list that matches the three million. Anything above, you know, just put the whole list out there and say, "Hey guys, here's the line: three million to the board, of, you know, to the mm -hmm. district, and let us. And we're fine. We know how to move stuff around, and um, and then we just bring it to the full board commissions for any amendment. That, that's yeah. my thought right now. But that three million does not include the five hundred that goes to the LMIG, correct? Yeah, no, it does. You just said it does. Okay. Yeah. So then we're talking about two and a half for the squats resurfacing. Yeah. Two and a half plus, what you said, yeah. plus mm -hmm. your five hundred for yes. as you said the board already approved gives me to my three million. So two point five is for the splost only and half a million dollars is for the LMIG. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Again? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And any additional be, would be for discussion on the floor board. Mm -hmm. Any amendment. Yeah. To, to that understanding. Amendment. Yeah. Amendment. We'll help frame this, guys. You got that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Miguel, you okay? Yes, sir. <coughs> okay, we'll I'm not, yeah. I, I got you. We, 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 we got this. So moved. Can I get a second? Second. Okay, all in favor of what we just said? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Mm -hmm. We got this. Okay. We got this. All right, so again, one more time, um, um, our understanding is- We'll start and I'll get yeah, in there. Yeah. $2.5 million um, that will fund strictly out of the SPLOS, Half million dollars to house spots for the LMIG resurfacing. Mm -hmm. Miguel's going to provide us with a list up to three million. If you can get a list up to three point five million, recognize you got to show the line based on um, yeah. equal distribution amongst the four. Mm -hmm. well, the commission may want to pull this one in. As, as close to equal as I we can. Oh, sure. We understand. Yeah, we understand. Understand. Yeah, we've done this. Yeah, we Some people may have more over. We've more. got more control over it than we went with, with the state. Mm -hmm. That's right. I wonder there about, I think about the two thirds of my words got cut. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right, I guess okay. I voted wrong. I don't know. All right, so are we okay on that matter? Yes. Miguel, I mean, that, um, yes again, I think you know, in future years, it's probably a lot. We just, just through this transition moment. So mm -hmm. I'm with you. I don't, I don't think this is a real issue, but we just want to talk about it. We don't have to force it, not on this issue. All right, we'll keep going. You know, top mark, you okay? Yes, sir. All right, let's go forward. Next up is multimodal services, transportation status update, etc. Proposals. All right, Mr. Watson. All right. The uh, this is the reconciliation of committee evaluations as a four o'clock. Thursday afternoon per Bill Peacock. I do not know if uh, this included everyone on the committee's no, evaluation or okay. not. So probably what we will need to do is is get back with uh, Mr. Peacock. I tried to contact him several times today. He's been out of town. Uh, and I was unsuccessful in getting, getting with him. I wanted him to come come to our meeting today, but yeah, that, that didn't work. But anyhow, we we issued the RFQ to about 15 uh, firms locally and throughout the Atlanta area. We got these five responses back. And you can see what the scoring to this point is on them. Okay. Um, let, let, let's. It, so, mine is not included. Um, okay. All right. Mine is not included, um, but it doesn't too far. It's not too far off um, as relates to dissimilar as far as. Um, but but so I'm I'm comfortable with that per se. But 
I, I do need mine to be included per se. Um, it, it, um, you talking about your score points? Uh -huh. It good much meant. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, how it fell out. Like one firm just told me, like, yep, I agree. That didn't like why, why did they even submit? So okay, all right, we got it. All right. That being said, um, and I think we talked about this before. Let's assume we will certify what the full committee's members are and so forth. Um, is the goal? Is it the pleasure of the committee to bring back? Maybe a top two. I mean, I think our intent was that if there was just a single person that was all outright, they were the best. We go with that as a recommendation. But if there was like a, a, a one and two, mm -hmm. do we bring in the top two? Gary, we talked about this, and this is not new. Yes, so this is more me coming back to you guys. Um, we bring in um, the top two for a formal, typical 15 to whatever 15 minute pitch and goal defense and answer questions. Would y'all be willing? That would be my preference. Okay. Yes, sir. So I tell you, it's hard to it's hard to look at these things, especially when the categories we had that some of them didn't even right. submit a project schedule. I mean, right. that was all of them didn't. Right, which is why they lost points. And that's why mine's a little bit different. Than, yeah, I, I dinged them. Oh, I did too. Um, and it was just some of them. I don't know. It's just hard. Of course, I know these things were specified in the RFP, so they should have made sure that they at least. You know, took care of every single one of these, yeah. these and items, and they did. Um, right. Mm -hmm. But mine is pretty close. It's a little bit. My top one is a little bit off on what the it's not the total is, but it's, it's, it's pretty close. Mm -hmm. one, one thing that I did notice in the firms, and this is maybe it's the way we wrote the RQ, or maybe it was the way that. Um, we evaluated against the RFQ, but then so maybe what they presented was sort of, I didn't see the technical services. Do I see a lot of waiting was for almost 50% 50, 50 of the points we giving toward this branding, that that might have been 10% of the dollars, right? Come up with a logo. Think about when we had our last conversation, right? We sort of framed, can't be no more than maybe 10 grand, right? Um, we recognize that the education component was going to be important, which means that that's physical effort, whether it's collateral material, which I'll give it some credit, or there's physical people out there facilitating on the ground in public, you know, public engagement moments. And so I, 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 and so I was looking for what we thought we were listening, of reading, looking for things I thought were important. Um, now, you saw a lot of emphasis on there was a lot of people who had experience of being consultants. They're just, no doubt about it, they're, they're master planners. But what I didn't see is that, I mean, you saw one firm that's probably really good technically. Like, okay, they, they rock stars. You, you got that, but they lack the other part, right? It, it seems like they were more, they can go in the corner and they can rock something out for us, but they lacked the, the sort of the overall planning. And then some firms would just, obviously, they have direct experience in engaging publics in, 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 on that. And then some firms had, um, the, the actual experience in, in, in true transit systems, which obviously we talked about uh, as being important. Um, they were all over the board. I mean, but I, I think there was sort of a, to your point, Mark, you, you, you totally missed it. Meaning it was, mm -hmm. you lost points in the areas that were just like, well, at least you got to be able to do that. Um, the schedule, I was willing to give credit. You talked about, okay, here's our methodology. Here's our approach, not me. And I agree with you. Only maybe one firm put schedule. We, we, it was, we could see it. Uh, we could actually read it. But that being said, um, I, again, I won't belabor this moment um, because we've got a next step. You'll just make sure we've got everybody in and have it certified for us what the ultimate numbers are? Yes, sir. Now, okay. Commissioner Robinson just turned his in. Does anybody else have their evaluation now? I think I'm done. Everybody? Okay. No, I'll rely on the chair. Yep. Okay. All right, so we're in. Right. That's got to be in. That's important. Okay. Add them in, and whatever the tabulation is, you invite those next two. Keep it clean. You invite the next two firms out. Mark, you make sure you guys, mm -hmm. for us, let us know. Question is, do y'all want to do this before our next meeting? Are we going to do a, a special call meeting to bring them in, or are we going to wait until our next transportation? If we do that, we're getting way out. The issue is, the, the, the goal, the ideally, would have went to the Board of Commissioners at our next meeting, because time we meet again is to what, in March? Yeah. We engaged them, now we're in May, June? Like, we, we missed the window of doing the public education. I just, that's taking too long for decision making. Here, how, how quick? How quick? 
Well, let me get with, with Mr. Peacock and, and we can uh, finalize the tally sheet quickly and then we will move quickly to set up interviews with the top two firms. And I would think we should be able to do that very quickly. And it'll okay. probably have to be a separate date, just trying to coordinate right. with the firms plus yeah. Yeah. everybody right. in this group. It probably wouldn't match up to our next transportation committee meeting anyway. Nice. We'll call a special summer. call. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> In the next two weeks, they got to move. They yes. want this. They got to go. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, Miguel, you free? Sure. Mm -hmm. right. So we're agreeing that the action item is that um, Director Watson will compile and certify the full board committee's um, tabulation. Uh, he will take us the next step to invite our um, top two, correct, respectfully out um, in the next two weeks. Um, a special call the transportation committee to report back the findings, uh, well, uh, which will be presentations by the top two mm -hmm. firms. Is that accurate? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mark? Yep. Okay. So, can I get a recommendation to, to authorize the to go out and the director to go out and actually bring them into phase two, and that we will stand by the final certified results as submitted today? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? Okay. All right, next up, let's keep moving, guys. All, All right. right. Uh, next yeah. item is, is a uh, very brief update on the Chattahoochee Trail system. Yes. We have uh, a uh, design consultant uh, developing phase two of that trail system, I do have a sketch. Uh, don't have a copy for everybody, but I can pass it around. Pass it around. Uh, one of the things that uh, obviously phase two of the project is going to tie into the pilot project at Boundary Waters and work its way up to um, to the uh, Sweetwater State Park. Initially the intent and what, what is reflected on this uh, schematic here yeah. was that it would follow the, the river trail uh, pretty much and then veer off north mm -hmm. aiming for the uh, Sweetwater State Park. One of the things that we have encountered and uh, are working through is that the park is not, um, that they're having difficulty with the idea of a trail coming into the park system without having the ability to generate uh, some revenue for the park to mitigate the expenditures associated with uh, their operation. Is that a requirement? Is that a requirement? I guess it's their requirement. <laughs> essentially, <laughs> essentially what, I mean, what yeah. they're saying is is that uh, if we have a trail system where we provide a, a trailhead, yes. say, for parking, yes. and then uh, the patrons would uh, would use the trail and follow it up to the park, uh -huh. they're going to bypass the current uh, amenities where there's parking uh, and they have to pay a fee for that, uh, and then perhaps concessions uh, for the use of the trail. Uh, so that's the difficulty that we ran into at we haven't ruled out uh, the ability to connect to the park at some point, but we're going to have to have extensive discussions with them to be able to do that. So in the meantime, in order to move the project forward, what we're looking to do is to uh, realign that north connection to the park to actually go out to Thornton Road uh, along the river. And so we're looking to develop the same approximately the same length of trail, mm -hmm. uh, but deferring that connection to the state park um, <coughs> till we resolve that issue. All right, so... Oh, you're talking about Sweetwater Park. Sweetwater. I, I, and I'm thinking, by the way, I thought we got it. Yeah, it's Sweetwater. coming from Coming from coming Boundary. From boundary, coming from boundary. Oh, so we're going to stop right down there, right, right there at Thornton. Well, initially, it was going to veer off and head to the park at uh, Shore of the Fort. Now, uh, because of that issue, we're looking to take it all the way to Thornton. And so it would be from Boundary Waters to Thornton. 
and then uh, at some point, once that other issue is resolved, we figure out a way to work with the park, then that would be a future phase potentially that, to make that connection. So, so in my discussion with uh, yeah. Miguel, because uh, we're talking about an economic development yeah. campus right here, why wouldn't we take the trail in, into the campus as, as a condition for the developer to, uh, you know, develop or, you know, implement in his footprint, in that footprint right there. And then we're and then we're adjacent to the park. So I'm not talking anything that's too much, I mean, it's considerably different what you're talking about, but the, the same idea is not going directly to the park, but coming up in here somewhere. Because they want, they want, they want eastern access to the park through this economic development. Mm -hmm. and, and the price for that means, either it be a parking trailhead right there, that would be where you could bring the trail in on that side if they want to charge people for a bicycle. Oh, geez. Let me ask a question. And again, this is my concern. Okay. Mm -hmm. you, you got Riverside to the south. You got Thorn Road going north. You've got the factory shows in Douglas Hill where we're building this. We agreed in our master plan that we're going to we're going to have this side access road that's supposed to come all the way down the Riverside, right down there by Rock House. There's those homes right there at Summer Lake that, that back ends all the way up on the Sweetwater State Park. Why are we not running this along the very plan that we, we've been putting in place trying to, we just went through these variants and, and planning and zoning. Uh, we've got those developers that are supposed to be extending the roads along there. I mean, why mm -hmm. would we? I think that's what that Mr. Mulcair was saying. I mean, right. that's yeah. what I'm asking. Yeah. Are you saying that? Yeah, yeah. Because that, that's a, yeah, that's. I didn't hear that. I yeah. heard it's going all the way to Thornton. Would this wouldn't make it all the way to Thornton, though. It wouldn't be a need to go all the way to Thornton because Rock House doesn't make it to Thornton. You, you cut, you're cutting it through the tree. You're coming up through the trees. Right? There's a whole mm -hmm. different road that's coming down here. Yeah. I can't spot it on here. But so, yeah. See, this is, Help me out. This, this, is, this is Thornton Road right here. Okay. And then the red is the trail. And we're talking about straightening this out and bringing it up into that development that you're talking We're about. Sweetwater. Oh, in this. Green. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, all of that's mm -hmm. All right, so how do you, now show me. That's your economic development campus right there. Right. All right, where, this is Riverside down here, right along? Uh, well, here's the Chattahoochee. So it's right north of that. Yeah. Uh, right along in here. Yeah. And you're going to cut up into here, basically. Yeah. But you're not going to make it all the way to Thornton. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, we're not designing it. We're just yeah, I mean, it's just, it's conceptually. Mm -hmm. So well, right. there is one of the reasons why uh, uh, we thought that we, in, in lieu of this, we could bring it this way is because this is all parkland as well. Mm -hmm. And so we have the ability to make that connection. Now, in addition, uh, Cobb County, City of Atlanta, Fayette County, they're all working on, on similar concepts on their side. And the the ultimate goal is to connect all the systems together. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, the the cub portion would uh, potentially come into Thornton Road, mm -hmm. yeah. right about where we're thinking of ending our trail. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, good with that. To, to your point, Commissioner, uh, we could come up Thornton Road to this commercial area and be able to make that tie in to uh, coming from coming the from east, the east coming in from the east. Okay. And putting it through the uh, our, 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 our corporate, you know, our development mm -hmm. campus that, that would help. The us Douglas out. Hill. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, a lot of that development is already either in place or, or approved for um, for construction. So this would be an effort that that would fall on us to to move forward. I don't think we can we can put it as a Requirement a on them because again, but, but, but isn't that part of the master plan? Didn't we talk about the master plan for the Sweetwater that there would be bike lanes and there would be running trails and it was going to be all residential? It's in our plan. Yeah, now, yeah, it is, Commissioner. But that is that is behind. That's not along Douglas Hill. That is uh, along Bollard Road and down. Uh, I guess I'm not sure what Bollard. Okay. We need a, we would have to have a better map, so. Yeah. So what are we asking? What's your ask? There's there's, there's no there's no ask at this point other than than letting you know where we are in terms of the design that we hit a roadblock 
with the original alignment, make it a connection directly to the park, yeah. and we're looking to extend it to uh, to Thornton Road to, to develop the same. I mean, I frankly, I kind of, I kind of prefer the idea of just rather than turning and trying to come up into the park. I, I kind of like to think this is a better idea for for future options. Frank, Frank. The connect the connectivity. Yeah, but still want to get into the park, and I think the opportunity is going to be from the east side. Mm -hmm. but, because the park itself is wanting uh, ingress, egress from the east side. Okay. Miguel, um, so the consultant is engaged. Are we? Did we pay a consultant, which is done through like AR? Who, who funding this? We we are, and, and there's federal funding on on uh, this project. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we did a match. Mm -hmm. with engineering and consulting the soft services. Okay. Yeah, one point six million or one point four or something. One point six. Yeah, and that's on our list here. Right. Mm -hmm. it should be. Mm -hmm. Tabuti Hills is yes, on our list. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. I'll, I'll take a look at it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So that was just an update. Yes. This is where we are. Commissioner Walker, yeah, we'll continue have our yeah. conversations regarding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, okay. Yeah. I, I like the the alternative being you know, most kind of forced on. But I, I, but, I, but I don't think that denies us access, and shouldn't deny us access to park. People want that. Yeah, I, I agree, and it, and it uh, positions us for connectivity to the more regional system coming up. And, you know, and, the way, and you know, the way I would package that, so so DNR, the state park system, they want people to drive to this park. They don't want people coming on bike and bicycles they're going to, or walking. They're going to penalize people. And, and, you know, it doesn't make sense to me. That's that's a conversation that we yeah. need to continue to have with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right, any more, Mark? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go ahead and um, that was just an update, no action then? No action. Uh, just that's a status point. update, thank you. All right, let's keep it moving, guys. Um, okay. Transportation? Or no? Yes, yes, yes. yes. capital tra transportation fund. Uh, we, we have done uh, additional uh, research and we have been able to correlate the expenditures with the finance uh, committees or the finance department's uh, expenditures. Okay. And based on the numbers, uh, it looks like uh, between the original budget, the expenditures to date, uh, we have a, 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 an allocated balance of $454,530. Mm -hmm. Remaining on the fund now, there there is also some uh, some uh, encumbered funds that were left over from some of the uh, projects that were completed that will be able to be moved into this unallocated uh, total, and will add perhaps another couple hundred thousand to it. Yeah. So when they reconcile that, when they move the funding, then but we are in agreement that uh, all of the funding. All of the expenditures that we've been able to uh, trace and uh, get documentation for are legitimate to these projects. So, Mr. Mulcair, you, you took half a million dollars out of the capital transportation fund for the budget. You did half, up to a half million dollars um, for transportation services needs. Mm -hmm. Right? So we have a million four going to the budget. Just want to make sure. Did that sound about right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is that everything, now I can, we're comfortable regardless. I think it was maybe one project that we're still questioning, we roll by um, And um, is that, has that been accounted for? Because I know Mark, we for the master contract and all that, and I think you had to copy it. Where do we stand on that? Well, that's that's the next time. Okay, well my bad. Back, well, well, actually there's two of them, but, but that's coming up. The, the uh, Lee Road was not part of this capital fund. The funding for Lee Road is not on the capital fund list. In other words, um, that was part of the Greta uh, funding, uh, separate. All right, so what was funding it, though? All right, so it's not being funded here. I got to follow that. We've only got one checking account. Mm -hmm. Unless there's, you know, this is not like the shares, you know, he got his own forfeiture account, he got his name on it, that's independent of. Mm -hmm. Help me reconcile where is that money sitting? Okay, well, I, I do have a, a handout for that item, which would have been item number eight, if you okay. want to jump to that. Please, let's just keep the continuity up. I apologize to my fellow colleagues, but this is related. Mm -hmm. 
expenditures on the lead road and the budget. Does it reflect BM or is this? This is a, a BM okay. uh, as well, yes. Okay, all right, fair enough, that's important. This is, this is the best forensic uh, accounting that I've been able to do. Okay, this is a backward look. This is not a refinance. This is not a try to re, um, take us forward. This is a reconciliation purely of the past. Correct. All right, I just need to say that for the record. Okay, go ahead, we go. Okay, so um, originally uh, there was an agreement uh, between Greta and the county, uh, also the DOT, back in 2002-2003 time frame, and the, the, the agreement provided for a funding allocation uh, by Greta to the county for future projects to the tune of $19,719,000. That initially was budgeted for three different projects, and uh, uh, given you the list of what those three projects were as far as the, the original budget, the, the Lee Road, South Sweetwater uh, Road widening, which is really Lee Road widening phase one, which was from I-20 North to uh, 78, I think, in the 70s, 78. Mm -hmm. And then Lee Road phase two widening, which is south of I-20 to State Route 92. And then the, the dual Lee Lane extension, um, and so that that added up to the nineteen million seven hundred nineteen thousand. Okay. The expenditures that we've been able to trace uh, to the South Sweetwater uh, design effort, because that was never taken beyond the design uh, phase, and the dual Lee Lane projects, which was fully designed and fully constructed, was little under $3 million. So that left a balance potentially available for the Lee Road widening project phase two from I-20 down to State Route 92 mm -hmm. of $16,784,591. Now, that was all the way back from 2002 progressing to when Dura Lee Lane was constructed uh, many years ago. So. This amount, $16,784,591, is what theoretically should be available based on the original agreement to go towards uh, Lee Road Widening Phase 2. Stay there. And this money that you have risked here, is this within Douglas County coffers, or is this just sort of an implied, some type of implied? It was, it was not um, a, a upfront allocation. Okay. It was a almost a guarantee that uh, Greta would support federal funds being allocated for the projects in the future, back then and in the future. So there was there was uh, like uh, like a schedule of how much funding they would uh, uh, make available every year. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, how how this plays out is whenever a project is conceived, there's a preliminary budget attached to it, and then there is a federal funding allocation component that is attached to the project, and this all goes to the Atlanta Regional Commission. So essentially when the budget was conceived for the three projects, they, they intended for the, the preliminary engineering phase to start in 2003-2004, play out over a period of two, three years, and then go to the next phases, um, you know, right-of-way acquisition and construction. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's taken a lot longer to, to get us there, and, and some of the phases are not quite there yet. So, to your point, Commissioner, to your question, the $19,719,000 initial agreement was a promise for future funds 
support from Greta to have the funding come from the feds and be allocated to the budget. Right. It was not a check for that amount. Not a grant that we received. It was no. a promise to fund. A promise to fund. Correct. So with that promise to fund, was it an absolute guarantee or was it conditional based on certain thresholds? It was. So I'm assuming, could you tell me that this is still active today? Yes or no? I cannot say that with 100% certainty. Okay. Now we're able to because give the because the, f the federal funds typically have a 10 year expiration. Okay. And I, I can't be certain that all of the funding uh, is still viable. Right. Stay there. Mm -hmm. when, did, when did this start again? 2001? Two. 2002. Mm -hmm. so we're 16 years, give take. Make it 15 since last year. That's what you're mm -hmm. That is your threshold. 15 years later. But yet, this is where I'm going with this is that, well, that may be true, and I'll accept that. We've got a known fact is that in our contract, or if there's some imply that if I get behind, I'm going to just keep spending local money past the 10 years. See where I'm going now, right? I moved into years 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We're still out here buying right away. We're doing things along the road that we knew three, four, five years ago that this has expired. Or is there something in contract that says that well any money you do spend we'll reimburse you per se but that don't mean you don't mean that's what I'm looking for because it's like if that is true if I follow your business your logic line that then we shouldn't have took any action beyond 2012 um, on anything regarding the road until we had assurances that we were still covered moving forward because it seems like we've gone out here now and taken certain actions beyond. We've taken certain actions along the road. It's like, well, why do we spend that money? Well, that money could have been reappropriated. It, it's. But well, we we do know this that there were certain uh, beyond 2003 there were additional agreements that the county entered into with GDOT that locked in a certain portion of those funds. For example, we know that for the right-of-way acquisition component, mm -hmm. at least that portion is viable. And that was viable for, that was in the amount of $6 million initially. There was a question as to whether there was a subsequent agreement. I have not been able to find it, uh, but potentially there was a second agreement. But So we know that at least uh, the $6 million that that is part of the agreement for the right-of-way is viable. We know that the expenditure for the uh, uh, preliminary engineering is viable because the county has been reimbursed for it, essentially. Right. What about the six million? We've been the six million, that? we've been uh, reimbursed uh, five point some million. Ah, that's good. All mm -hmm. right, so we're clean. We're, we're, it sounds like at least what we spent, we're clean. Yes. We're just out there with an ink, you know, it's like a a road to nowhere, Mike. Mm -hmm. we got to we, we condemned, we bought right away. The public is looking at, okay, so when y'all go finish? I mean, yeah, I mean we. So well, think about I mean, the federal and state have committed money to this project as well. Uh, they haven't? They have, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they've uh, committed money to this. So it's, it's hard to, for me to imagine that they would abandon it. And what do we need to do? Well, they, I mean, they've, they've sort of met their commitment to, to the extent that we've purchased right of way close to about six million now mm -hmm. uh, they've reimbursed us for for those costs most of those costs. is that because the local match or salt something like that commensurate with all this all right is there uh, again so how do we finish it right what's left okay well, that's 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 the next uh, that's the key thing. Keep yeah. going. That, that's the next component down below. So, so initially I gave you a summary of where, where we were and where we thought we should be. Yep. And the bottom table gives you the expenditure. So if you look at, uh, at uh, the, uh, the uh, total amount of the project based on, uh, so the middle, the middle column. Yep. If you look at that, for preliminary engineering, we're at 765. 
1,918 right of way, the total expenditure is about close to 7.5 million. We anticipate that we, the county may have as an, an exposure of 1.5 million for utilities, and I say an exposure because we're still negotiating with the utilities in terms of the value of uh, the impact that the county uh, has would be causing because of the widening and, and therefore how much they think they should be reimbursed. So the way that typically works is if the county is going to widen the road and there are utilities within the area that the county purchases, then the county has to reimburse the utility for moving them out of the way. And that, uh, again, is the, the potential exposure up to one and a half million. The cost estimate, originally around $12 million, is now at 18 million. And so uh, between uh, the, the fact that the utility phase was never part of the overall uh, estimate and the budget having gone from 12 to 18, that creates a much larger exposure to the county. So uh, theoretically, to be able to finalize the project with all of the known exposure for utilities and remaining right of way, mm -hmm and construction, based on the current estimate, would be a little over $28 million. Now, that number is at the, the middle column at the bottom. Yep, okay. All right, so that's 28, 28 million. Now, if all of the funding uh, promised by Greta that has not been expended is still viable, and, and I say that's a question mark, but if it's still viable, mm -hmm. then that would be the, the next call to the right, yeah. that you could apply that entire amount against the 28.1 million, and that amount is 16 point, close to 16.8 million. So that leaves the county with uh, an exposure of 11.3 million. Now, so the 11.3 million is on top of every, well, what remains of the uh, reimbursable amount, which is a little over 10 million. So if we can prevail on the DOT, ARC, Greta, to reallocate what remains, the 10 million, 18,673, yep that still would leave the county with a remainder of 11 point That's this number here. That's the number mm -hmm. to the right. Okay, on that point, just real quickly, mm -hmm. the reimbursable amount for uh, right of way was uh, 6,000, uh, six, excuse me, six million dollars, mm -hmm. you said viable, and the county's amount is, uh, you know, one, one million four hundred ninety-four thousand. Mm -hmm. uh, that has not uh, been executed, so we still would have to uh, pay that uh, right away. Potential share. Uh, some of that, um, and I, ha I haven't been able to fully confirm this, but it, it would seem that that based on the fact that the remainder is a million meaning unencumbered or pending is a million for right of way. Mm -hmm. And the county exposure is at close to 1.5, mm -hmm. 1.4, That some of those funds have been yes, expended already mm -hmm. and not reimbursed by the state. Now, where they came out of that I can't, I can't speak to. So the, the county amount would be uh, eleven million three hundred twenty-six thousand, possibly less uh, the right of way acquisition, some nebulous unknown right of way amount. Correct, and and the uh, utility amount also could vary. Okay, so it so it, so it could be between eleven point three million and nine point eight million, depending on the right of way. Mm -hmm. Now, but but it's a lot of money. 
Well, but top uh, or bottom is a lot of money. Yeah. Of course. And so I thought I hadn't to date. I say to date, but <coughs> haven't we been being so far? We've been reimbursed for everything, all the right away. Any right away money we spent <coughs> been reimbursed. We have not been. Re uh, I I believe we have not been reimbursed for all of the right away because there are right of way costs that are non reimbursable under federal right. So administrative costs, for example. Yeah. They're not reimbursable. So if you incur the cost and you turn it in as part of your billing, they will deduct it from that. Mm -hmm. So But as far as right away purchases uh, as far as right away purchases, yes. All of that we've been fully reimbursed. Okay. Uh, we submitted uh, the last reimbursement uh, that we submitted was in the neighborhood of 1.6 million, and that's pending. We haven't we haven't received the funds, but it's they're reviewing the, the submit. All right. Um, so, to, all right. So let's let's I'm not trying to. So duly noted, you've done a yeoman's job in trying to get this reconciled. I want to acknowledge. I mean, I know we mm -hmm. um, we've been working with um, our director of finance and her team. We appreciate we, we've been after this for a minute just to get a certain sanity. But you know, to Commissioner Moke here, sort of a side a side eye sidebar, we just had like, okay, ten million. I mean, it goes on the long term capital planning process. But here's my question. All right, so um, is this now the SPLOS, economic development. Some of that money was used to do the master plan, right? For yeah. mm -hmm. um, that area in no or across the street or somewhere in that vicinity? Somewhere 75,000 has been allocated for the Lee Road extension. That's on across the street. Mm -hmm. That's across the street. Line. Yes, sir. It doesn't matter. I'm asking the question. Where do we get the funds from? So this means we'll get reimbursed. If we spend this money, we get this reimbursed? But we got to spend this money, and there's a bigger number above this. You know, so like the bridge, forty-three million dollars, which we never could eat. But what do we? What am I hearing? What are you saying? But what I'm saying is that that we have a gap of about twenty-one million. Ten of that could potentially be rounded up as part of the commitment by Greta, but eleven million has to come from other sources. Round numbers. And if. If they don't reallocate that $10 million, like the original agreement said, back to the original agreement, then that number, instead of $11 million, is $21 million. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay, to finish the project. I see. Is there some type of refinancing? So go for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is there a refinance moment of the agreement that says that, okay, do we know it? I, mean, I, do, I think you've got us 95% of the answer. I'm just going to hold, hold this right here for the sake of <coughs> conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying it's a final findings, but it's just just hold that. Um, is there an opportunity to take this moment in time and, and using refinance, but restructure the agreement to carry this forward? You know, new group, new like look. I don't know what that was about. That looks like it's expired. Can we re up, re whatever the proper term is for it? Or what are your thoughts on that? I, I think there is there is the opportunity that uh, it's going to take some finessing, um, right. but uh, I wanted to be able to do the research and get us to where where we are now in terms of mm -hmm. the expenditures as best yes. as we can determine. Yes. And then take this and have the discussion with uh, Greta, uh, well now CERTA, um, the ARC, which I've already had some preliminary discussions with, and the DOT and see where we are. I think there is a, a chance that we can do that, but it's not going to be uh, a routine process. Not going to be easy. No. But but again, in light of the hand, and, you know, we got a spots, we got economic development. I mean, put all on the table and see what we can do. I mean, we, I mean, in light of the, the Greta update we got earlier. I mean, there's just like we built the transportation services building as part of the original agreement, is my understanding. I'm like, just go back to the table with the same. You know, a 2.0 of that, just the spirit of that. This is okay, guys. Now we're going to refresh. 30 years later, 20 years later, let's do it over. Um, I, I think we've got a, a bigger hand, and you know, we got something to work with. This is not a recession. This is not 08, 09, which I, I know that would have been a, a, it wouldn't have happened. But 
the question is, are we really shovel ready? But I think at the end of the day, we've got to give an account to the citizens that, okay, we started something, and based on what I'm hearing is that unless we come up with a solution, then we just, we're, we're, we're done. There's nothing else to do. We ain't got the money. Oops, my bad. It's not a good answer. I mean, that's just us talking. Mm -hmm. we, we can't go to them with that type of um, language. And so we're just looking for what the plan is. Now, whatever the plan is, the plan, and then we as the collective board of permissions will determine do you think you can, we, we need a path forward. We need a path forward of at least an option and mark, you know, it's okay if our um, probability of success and, severe, you know, likelihood of success, to put that aside for a second. We, you're already in play. You know, we, we had material constituent impact, right? We used condemnation power. Condemnation power was used to remove citizens from their property. It, it, it just can't be, oh, my bad, we ain't got no more money. It, it, that yes. can't be the answer. But, would you agree? Yes, absolutely. And, uh, I mean, the, the situation is, is uh, we've got a problem. Yeah. Or, We've got a real problem. If you catch my drift. Mm -hmm. Or we have a real problem, or we have a real, real problem. A grocery worser. Yeah. <laughs> but do you have a path forward? Yeah, that, and that's what yeah. we have to have. It, it doesn't matter. Right. You know, it doesn't matter. Well, I can't. I certainly can't answer a lot of the questions that have come up about this uh, today, and I don't know what kind of impact it would have on discussions moving forward. But I can give a little history on how this original Greta Intergovernment Agreement came about. This was back in 2002 to 2003 when Greta was getting ready to implement the express bus service to Douglas County and, and other communities. Right. And so what, what they did with us here in Douglas County, uh, they came, came out and said, okay, if you'll give us $1.6 million help start the bus service. In turn, we'll give you this $19 million mm -hmm. for That's road exactly projects. Right. And so I don't know, mm -hmm. again, I don't know. That's a 10%, two, basically two million for 20 million. I'm just doing it for easy math, so. Okay, can I get that deal? Yeah, right, can we, we get took it, yeah. We took it, we <laughs> took it. <laughs> then they took it back. How did we get away from us? Why did we get it? So if we took it and we were doing all the things that were necessary to be reimbursed along the way. How do we find ourselves here that it's not there anymore? I mean, how do we get beyond 2012 um, mm -hmm. without having that conversation saying, oh, we could have won the implied or expected 10 year expiration date associated with these things. And unless you have some agreement to extend it, I mean, where was the cop? It's more of a legal thing. It's more of a Guys, we got to monitor. Go back to federal reporting. Go back to the things that we know that are conditions associated with certain grants and monies. Why? Why? You know, this is not. But you get my point. It's like, how do we not know that there was exposure here, um, and that we need to be on that to say, okay, we're coming to the end of this. What do we need to do? At, like the end of any lease, uh, anything, you need to go say something and say, okay, can we re-extend this, revisit this, and just we. Because I mean, it just makes me think, oh, how do we miss that? Okay, is there anything else we need to talk about in this one? I mean, Commissioner Mulk here, mm -hmm. I mean, I think we've got the update that we're looking for, the 95% answer. Is there some additional thought that needs to be given? Because we are going to have to give an account. So um, I don't think it has to be by our next board of commission meeting, but by our next transportation. Can we have at least some thoughts on a, a formal um, path forward? Yeah, plan forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll start action item on this. Plan for by the next transportation. Okay. Okay. Yeah, perhaps even some, you know, preliminary contacts and some discussion uh, outside the committee. Yeah. Wait, he, well, yeah. 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 yeah, you don't need us to do you two do. I just want to put that out there. Yeah. Don't wait for us to do well, that's the plan. Understood. Yeah. All right. Can we keep going? Mm -hmm. Martin? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Follow through. All right, next up on our agenda. Let's see what we got here. I am six. Back to you. Uh, Whitestone Cove, I think. All right. That one, let me take that for just, uh, we were asked um, by 
uh, fellow commissioner and Jonas Goddard to add this for consideration on our list that came out in our work session. Mm -hmm. It was in a work session, so I just want to do that on the record that uh, there was an agreement to bring it forward um, into committee, and so Miguel, can you bring us forward? Absolutely. Um, we, over the last several months, have been uh, dealing with uh, the original, well, let me, let me step back a little bit. Initially, there was a design put together that involved box culverts, and that was bid out, and it came back uh, way more than the Six hundred thousand. And so we didn't have the money, so we went looking for Plan B. Plan B was to develop, rather than a box culvert, come up with a, an arch type, a con span yep. uh, culvert. And so preliminarily, uh, over the last several months, we went back to the con span folks and got them to come up with a preliminary design for the size of the culvert and the size of the footings that would be necessary. We had to go back out and get geotechnical information to provide them so they could base that on. We went through the exercise, came back with a preliminary design. Okay. We took the preliminary design and went back to the original consultant who did the plans and said, okay, here we met with them and said, okay, we're looking to finalize the plans to move this project forward. Uh, here's the information, here's our contacts, we need you to provide us with a, uh, with a proposal to, to finish the plan. Right. Uh, they, uh, they've done that and I do have the proposal which we will be putting on an upcoming agenda to uh, essentially re-engage the original designer to finish the plans so that we could then go back out and bid the project and move the project. Um, uh, as an aside, um, in the interim, uh, I guess late last year, perhaps uh, November-ish, we received funding towards this project from GDOT, mm -hmm. 150000 So there, there is a certain allocation of funding between them and, and the funding that we had already from other sources. Okay, so right now we have, what's that total? 200 from Douglas County, 50 from WSA, 50 from the developer, 150 from GDOT. 450. Well, how much was the total? Six what? Well, that was that was for the box cover. The box cover was, beards came in like 610. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 450. Right. We had 450. Ten of reconcile. Right. Oh, the initial cost estimate for the con span was 300 and something. Mm -hmm. Not from Miguel, I pointed at Miguel, but it wasn't from Miguel. The, the 600,000 is the full amount to finish the project? No, with the, with the original conceived box cover. Which yeah, is the triple 10 box cover. Yeah. The new design should be less, is our hope. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So do we... So we have sufficient money to take care of this is what I'm hearing. We, it's going to be close. It's going to be close. I understand. Yeah. Okay. We've always got the capital transportation. Mm -hmm. Digging. Dwelling. 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 Yeah, we up on it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Okay. Um. So that's just an update. It's the status. We we'll know when do they think that. What was your timing again? I just didn't write my note. Well, in, ter in terms of uh, next steps, really, I didn't give you timing per se, but uh, in an upcoming agenda, you will see an item for consulting services to move this along. It's going to take the designer probably three months, maybe four, to finish the drawings. Yes. And then we bid it out. So. Okay. I would say we'll probably be looking to get bids on this in the fall, All right, so we'll late do, summer. And then how long would it take to build something like this? We we'll have to set some expectations. Maybe three months. Or something. All right, so we went a whole other year basically on this, and we were always almost a year or two prior to union. And it just seems like it just seems like it's taking so long. I know we had negotiations and stuff that, that sort of drove us. This one was just. All right, so this culvert, I mean, in my mind, it, it's a big Chapel Hill culvert, you know, 
we play golf at Chapel Hill, we go under. Is it that big? Yeah, a culvert. It's that big, but deeper. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not that shallow. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's probably a 30 foot drop from the road bed down to the creek. Okay. I'm just guessing. Okay. You, you know what I'm talking about feet. when we drive? Okay, all right, mm -hmm. I got you. Okay. Okay. So, it's got to be lucky to be in before the end of the year, but that would be pretty lucky. Yeah. To, to get the project going, I think I think before the end of the year, we, we could get the project going. Mm -hmm. if it, I don't know if that would be mm -hmm. okay. okay. Let's be prepared to have a schedule, um, or at least a framework. That's all you can do. Um, and as you said, um, the design and update it. Chairman Waters needs to update to Mr. Geyer. Meeting minutes. Yes, you get minutes. <laughs> Oh, I, I'm sure. I'm sure that'll come up when I present the item. For yeah, no, no, he's. I'm not for it. Yeah, yeah, he, 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 yeah that's, you're good. All right, let's keep going, guys. I mean, this is good. But um, Miguel, let's, anything else on that? Uh, no, no, sir. Um, but that was something we did add. We will do that from time to time, as um, our fellow um, our commissioners may have um, points of interest. Sure. Uh, we can introduce them, and Miguel, they don't have to necessarily come to us. They may come to you, and that's that's fine. For the All right. Anything else? I, I jumped. Uh, yeah, item seven is the uh, yeah. the last item on the, on the agenda, and, and this is what uh, I think yes. we've, we've talked about this a couple times, and, and this is a, sort of a summary assessment of where we are and where, in my opinion, we need to be to get us to where we need to be within the next uh, few years. Yep, and. Uh, Again, we've talked about specifically about some of the items on here, maybe not all, but what I've, what I've done is I've put together a, an organizational chart. The, uh, the, the boxes that, that are at issue, the gaps in staffing are the orange ones. Everything in blue and yellow and teal uh, in color are uh, existing <laughs> positions. Uh, that's as close as I could get to the deal. Is there a, um, a legend that goes along with this somewhere? I just um, no. I, I, I'm I sorry, I didn't. I didn't put a legend on here. Okay. But, but, but for your purposes, the the gap is really the the oh, orange, oh, right. the yeah. orange, yeah. and it can be uh, it, it can be uh, summarized by uh, by functional area. So it, we can start with the multimodal front. We'll go from right to left because because that's the preponderance of uh, gaps in, in um, staffing. And I'll let um, Gary give us a brief summary of, of these positions to the extent that, uh, and I know we've talked about many of them, but uh, I think some of these positions, Gary, are in, uh, connected to uh, enhanced services, um, but some are not. Right. The <clears throat> pretty much all of them would be uh, tied to enhanced services, with the, perhaps the, uh, the exception of the transit service manager, which would be directly related related to the bus bus service, but. Uh, as we grow and add vehicles to our fleet and more facilities, we're definitely going to need a, a second person to assist with operations, and they, that's basically over overseeing the, the fleet of vehicles and the facilities. The, um, if we want to expand the voucher program, we're going to need a, a part-time clerk to help with the administrative aspect of that. Gary, didn't we just recently do that? We we put the grant what am I thinking of? Yeah, yes, sir, you're right. We put the grant application in okay. for, for that position. Okay, this is just a okay. Right. Uh, and that's why we're saying it's proposed okay. because we, we don't actually have the funding for it right. yet. Um, and the two uh, two positions one one of the proposed positions that I'd really like to see us move on pretty soon is the compliance officer to help with all the FTA and federal rules and regulations uh, that we have. And again, 
that that uh, administrative uh, burden is going to increase exponentially with the bus service as it, as it comes. Yeah. But the, the four positions that you see in, in orange, uh, if we could get those over the next 12 months, 18 months, uh, I think that would put us in a good position moving forward. Okay. And, and uh, moving from right to left again, the next functional area, program delivery, that, this, this is the division that deals with all those contracts with GDOT and the invoicing and all like that, mm -hmm. um, at least tracking the expenditure. Uh, we've talked about uh, the two vacancies, or, or the two gaps that you see on here, the utilities. Uh, both of these positions are can be funded from other than the general fund. So, for example, the utilities uh, construction inspector. This position, the county takes in fees for permits, and we have to follow up and inspect and follow up on those permits, that construction. Well, those fees would cover that salary. Now, right now, I think if, if you take in the funds and you do not provide the service, you're at risk of having the utility come back and say, uh, you didn't provide the service, we want our money back. So and right now, those revenues are going into the general fund. Direct, mm -hmm. not encumbered. It's straight. It's well, you know, he takes in the fees and then they get deposited in the general fund. Yeah, I got that. All right. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, the demand for those services is uh, substantially higher than we have. We only have one person that can do that okay. part of the time right now. We're so we so the county has an exposure in terms of the fees that have been collected on here. Yeah. Uh, so so again, this this the impact of the general fund would be negligible, or would be a wash if you consider the, the fees and covering this out. Okay. The other position is the one that we've talked about already as it relates to the uh, having uh, a construction manager mm -hmm. uh, to be able to pull in. And, to, yeah, mm -hmm. to pull in inspection staff from in-house, whether it be from transportation, engineering, uh, anywhere else that we can do in-house, and also manage the consultants because as we, we as we move forward with DOT projects, we're going to need to engage uh, testing efforts. Uh, we're we're going to need to have yeah. those on board. We're going to need uh, to have additional inspections uh, and reporting required back to GDOT. So. That's what this position, and we talked about both of these, I think. What have we been week. doing thus far? How do we, how do we fulfill? This is not like new. Do we just not do it, or we just, we got done through the outsource function? I mean, it, it, was, it was a hodgepodge, really, of people trying to pitch in and cover the gap. Do the best they can. Do the so best they could. Right, so we'll but there the was science. no no coordinated mm -hmm. effort uh, centralized. I mean, we just, I mean, that's what you said, this is an assessment, so this is sort of a, a, a truth moment, right? Mm -hmm. like, well, this is, so it's not a criticism, but we're just asking what was, what was really here, so I got to keep on. And then this, yeah. the one you're talking about now would also cover splice projects as well. That's correct. Right? So, so that's more up front. We, we so part of that it. funding could come from splice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Okay. So moving to the left, um, next functional area, traffic operations. We also talked about this uh, position for the traffic signal. We have 17 new signals that the county uh, could potentially be uh, assuming responsibility from for Route 92. Mm -hmm. And this technician, certainly we could not do it with a single technician. So this would go to cover that gap. Yeah. yeah, like Rock House as well. Uh, all of those. I mean, just mm -hmm. okay. keep going. Plus the 17 on the uh, 17. Oh, the yeah, 19. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all new signals and plus all the existing signals that, that we match. Okay. And then, so uh, then the next gap will move to the top, uh, yeah. really, and that is on the administrative side. Uh, we need somebody to follow the money, somebody to do the accounting, somebody to do. A, a, a yeah. job of what I've tried to do over the last several months of doing really forensic accounting 
Uh, but they would keep up with it. They would as keep it. Exactly. So and, and, what does Michelle, okay, so tell me, so one of the count, so I guess there's, that's the reconciliation deal, right? You got a department that has true um, fund, I don't want to say profit and loss, but you get it, you got true expense responsibilities. Correct. Um, and, and so you're keeping up with, your, like, like a project manager, a project director, he's keeping up with his money and he's reconciling against the pure accounting group. Correct. Is that yes. what I'm hearing? Correct. Your job is not to keep up with your projects. No. You're responsible. That be the market way you structure. He has to track the yeah, project, dollar to project. Yeah, Got invoices. You know mm -hmm. everything. Everything to do with the project, or they can come back and you can explain the rest. Yeah, of it. And, and this is in more detail than what Michelle does. Michelle keeps up with, with the numbers. She has the numbers, but they would keep up with the details. But much, much more detail. But let, let let me go to to the issue that Mark brought up because the. Whenever you use federal funding on any project, yep. the federal regulations require that you have the records, detailed records for the project for all expenditures, uh, including contracts, right. inspection reports, the whole guy in order. order. In order for a period of seven years okay. from the time you finish the job. No. Right. Most people think from Bank when accounts. you start. Check it accounts. When yeah. you complete and and close out the project, we yes. do final inspection done. They sign up. This project is complete. Seven years later, mm -hmm. minus one day, Federal Highway could come in and say, "Let me see your records." Right. And if you're not in compliance, yeah. Guess what? They have to give up, give back the funds. All right. So so so, tell me this. So mm -hmm. how have we survived this long? With not yeah. this function. And Gary yeah. has talked about this as I've known Gary about and so Gary you yeah. I'm yeah. Happy. Yeah. I'm acknowledging it at the importance of it and we do the mm -hmm. best we can and okay mm -hmm. they just didn't audit us. It just never fell on us. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. So it's not a trip, but it's like because I'm hearing you say, Well, we need to have all these records. I'm like, well, you know, it's about federal funding we've had, so how have we been doing so far? We've been lucky. We well that that's part of the remaining effort for me because I'm trying to get as many of those records compile and organize, we don't have them right now in in a fashion where if we were to be audited uh, by You don't have file folders like the clerk out here or the DA on the hallway, you don't have? No, sir. And I've been through federal audits, and uh, even when you have all the records where you can just pull from the files, yeah. that's difficult enough. But when you don't know where all the files are, Right. Well, well, you don't have your copies interest. of certain things. You are at a lot more risk, and and so this is a substantial benefit for us. Okay, you mm -hmm. put a star on that. Okay, mm -hmm. and, I, and this this accounting person, I would like to see them work with our program too, because I mean we deal with hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars mm -hmm. in federal projects. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you just have a, right? that person for transportation period, mm -hmm. handling whatever functions that you're delivering to the, the general yes. public. And I can't see duplicates of services. No, no, that's the, the intent. Intent. That, that would be the intent. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we, we also need, have need for an administrative clerk. We, uh, the way the setup, and Mark, you can probably fill in the gaps, uh, the way the, the developmental services is set up upstairs, there's a representative from each department available for somebody to come in wanting to take out a permit for whatever, have a question about mm -hmm. uh, building permits, whatever it might be. And we have one, in, we don't have an individual to put there. We've been relying on the secretary for uh, the traffic operations mm -hmm. division to, to handle that. And so whenever that person is out, then we got a pull from the administrative and department uh, administrative assistance, so we're not equipped to be able to, you know, interact with the public uh, on a regular basis without uh, having to draw disruption. And the intent on the way that's set up down there is what we call one-stop shop. So every single department that's involved in a development permit are available at the front counter. So every single department, except for now the fire marshal, which is up here. I mean, actually, over to the uh, fire and then building. But Randy lost a uh, lady retired. So the lady who was sitting up front, mm -hmm. the uh, 
secretary or administrative assistant, whatever it was, that position. She retired, and they didn't fill it. Okay. So for you know, eight, ten years, nobody was up front. Um, so for the last year or two, we've had uh, the yeah. secretary of traffic ops sit up front. Okay. I got it. Okay. Or they've had. And then getting back to public expectations, Commissioner Walker, mm -hmm. I mean, just there's certain fundamentals that it, like, really? We have no, I mean, nobody's home. Uh, nobody's, I, I get your point. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else? No, that's that's it. I mean, we've been asking for this, and you, like you said, yeah. we had already, so give us a chance to take a look at this. I'd like to talk to you, Commissioner Walker, mm -hmm. offline about this in mm -hmm. a little bit more detail, but, um, got it. Okay. Anything else need to come before this commission? Um, Transportation committee? No. There's no more. I'm, I'm tongue tied. No further action coming before this committee. Let's stand this meeting. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. This is one. Uh, yeah. <coughs> 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 That's okay. Yeah.